In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this fully parametric and adaptive chain in Revit. We're going to start off by creating the chain link family, and then we're going to load that in into another adaptive component, and we're going to transform that chain link into a full chain. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, which I'm going to link up in the cards above, and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours of content dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Also, I would like to thank Bin He's Revit study channel for the inspiration for this video idea. So now with Without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. Now to start this, this will be modeled as a family. So I'm just going to go here to new and it's really important to pick the correct family template. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go back one folder, find the English metric library, and then let's search for the generic model adaptive. Now you want to use adaptive because it's going to allow you to place adaptive points, which just means points that can be adapted or moved around. So to place these points, you just go and place uh, two basic point elements in this case. So just like this, hit the escape key a couple of times, you select them, and then you make them adaptive by clicking here on make adaptive. So this is point one, point two, and that's pretty much it. So these are now those adaptive points. Uh, now, uh, the chain link is going to go in between these. So I'm just going to select both of them and then click on spline through points that will make this line that will always connect them. Then let's select that line and let's hit is reference line. So it's going to just give us a bit more functionality. Moving forward, let's place some additional points on that line. So here I'm just going to select the drawn face and then draw a couple of points on this face just like so and then hit the escape key a couple of times. Now I want to uh, place additional points on each of these. So what I'll do is I'm going to go here to set work plane. I'm going to hover over it, hit the tab key once to highlight the horizontal one, click to select, go to point. Now you want to select draw on work plane. So it's only going to draw on that selected work plane. And then you want to click on point. Now it's going to give you this error message saying that these are two points in one place. This is exactly what you want. So let's click OK hit the escape key a couple of times, select that point, and now you can see you can move it. Now, when we move this point here, you will see we have this offset parameter, so we can move it with an offset, which is really cool. Now, I also wanna place one above that, so let's just go back to point. It's going to recognize the same work plane because we are still here on drawn work plane. Place it on that point, click OK, hit the escape key a couple of times, select that point and then move it up. Now we want to turn these offsets into parameters. So I'm just going to go here to this offset, click on associate family parameter. We don't really have any, so let's create a new one. So this will be a radius parameter. Click here on instance. So this will be an instance parameter. Click OK. OK, there we go. This one will be the same thing, however, in reverse. So this one is negative, this one is positive. So let's select this one, go to that same offset, click, and then let's create a new one, which will be radius negative. This will also be an instance parameter, click OK, click OK again. Now we want them to have the same offset. So let's go here to the family types click and then I'm just going to copy radius here, control C to copy. And then let's just type in here in the formula for radius negative minus control V to paste radius. Hit apply. And now as you can see, they're going to have the same value. So here, if I say 400, this one will have the same value and now they will move together. See, that's really cool. So anyways, let's bring this back to 400. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to be repeating the same thing here on the other side. I want to have just uh, two additional points there with the same parameters. 
Now at this point, this definitely doesn't look like a chain link, so let's make it one. So what I'll do is I'm going to select this point, hold the control key, select this one, and then go to spline through points, and then repeat the same process for the ones in the bottom, select both lines, and then let's make them reference lines. Perfect. Uh, now we need to create an arc shape here and here. So for that, let's go here to set work plane. I'm just going to select the vertical plane here, but not this one, the this one, which is kind of following the length of the line. So just use the tab key for that. Then use the center and arc tool, make sure that the draw on work plane is selected. You start from the center, you go here to one end, you make the arc, you finish here. Hit the escape key a couple of times and then let's just click on is reference and then I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now this is starting to take shape. However, we still need to add some sort of a profile which is going to be swept along this shape to create that chain link. So what I'll do for that is just place another point. Again, go draw on face, place it here on this line, hit the escape key a couple of times, go to set work plane and I'm just going to set it to this perpendicular work plane and then let's create a circle. So this will be, yeah, draw on work plane and create a circle there. Hit the escape key a couple of times, select that circle and then let's make it reference as well. And then also click here on make temporary dimension permanent. And now we can use this to turn this into a parameter. So let's go here to label and create a new parameter. This will also be an instance parameter and it will also be called radius. However, you can see that they've used the lowercase r and what that means is basically it's going to be a different name, Revit recognize or is uh, case sensitive. Uh, so this, even though we already have one radius parameter, this is lowercase r, so this will be a different parameter. Again, make sure it's instance and then click OK. So we have that parameter as well. Now let's add some radius parameters on these. So just select them, turn the dimension into a parameter and and then let's just apply the existing radius parameter that we have. So it's a really simple process and you just apply it here. Okay, so now we have these points and I actually want to change the distance from this point to the point here, which is where our chain link starts or the kind of radius of our chain link. So what I'll do is I'm just going to select this point here and what you'll notice is that in the properties panel, we have this thing that's called normalized curve parameter. So what this is, it's actually measuring from point one to point two, and that's the value is one. And then this is basically indicating how far along that value this is. So it's kind of like percentage or something like that. It just goes from zero to one. Uh, now, I don't want to use the normalized curve parameter. What I want to use is segment length. So I actually want to have a numerical value. So now we have this segment length and I'm just going to call this one offset. So let's click here to create a new parameter, call this one, also make it instance and then call it offset. Click OK to save that parameter. OK, and there we go. So we have that offset uh, parameter. And then on this side, what you'll notice is if I select this point, we also have it as a normalized curve parameter. However, here in this case, it's uh, giving us a different value just because it's measuring from this point to this point. So it's always going to give us a different value from here and to here. Now I actually want the distance from here to here be the same value as distance from here to here. So I'll just change the measure from and instead of beginning, which is 0.1, switch it to end, which is 0.2. And now this number makes a bit more sense. And then let's just change this to segment length. And there we go. So now this is set up as a segment length and we have that uh, uh, segment length here. And let's assign the offset parameter to that. And now the distances from here to here and here to here are equal. Now we want to control all of this through some formulas. So let's set those up. So let's open up our family types. And then here we want to find the offset parameter and this will be equal. And then let's find radius, control C, paste. So radius minus and then radius lowercase. Okay, so once we have that, let's then hit apply. 
Okay, so as you can see, this is set up here. So basically, it's this radius minus this value. So it's going to give us kind of the inner uh, position of that chain link as it appears. And then let's go back to family types and let's adjust the radius dimension to be radius, uh, let's then divide it by 2.5, for example, like this, and then hit apply. So it's going to be a bit larger and then click OK. Finally, we have the issue of the length. Obviously, it's too long. So let's create a parameter which is going to control the length. So as I said, this is a an adaptive point. So as you can see, we can move it around, but it's also better to have a parameter tracking that. So to do that, you go here to set work plane, you find the main kind of horizontal reference plane, uh, find the horizontal work plane, and then assign that uh, reference plane. Then you go to dimension, so align the dimension, di is the shortcut, and go from point to point, just like this, and let's place that dimension here, hit the escape key a couple of times, select it, and then let's create a new parameter for that. So this will be an instance parameter called length. And this will be a reporting parameter. This is really important. So it's going to report that value into the family. And then we can use that for calculations. So if we open this back up, now we can say that our main radius is equal to this length parameter. So let's copy it length and then let's divide that by three and hit apply okay and this is what we get so as you can see this now makes a lot more sense it's a smaller chain link but yeah it looks exactly how it should finally to actually turn this from this weird skeleton into actual geometry let's select the uh, circle then hold the control key select the reference lines and then go here to create form so it's going to create that chain link form. Finally, to complete this uh, family, we need to have some of these chain link segments be vertical, but some should be horizontal. So that can be controlled through selecting this point. And here we have the rotation angle. So what I'll do is I'm just going to select both of these points, go to rotation angle, and then create a new parameter. So this will be rotation angle. You can make it an instance parameter, then click OK. OK, there we go. So now this is the rotation angle. So now when I open up family types, and here you want to type in a negative value of minus 90 degrees for the rotation angle and apply. OK, so as you can see now, this is horizontal. So we will be able to adjust this uh, when loaded into a family. So now let's save this. I'm just going to click on save. I'm going to save it on desktop as a chain link and hit save. And now it's time to build a chain out of this. So for that, let's go again to fam new family. And then here I want to go one step back to open up metric. Again, I'm searching for the generic uh, model adaptive and then hit open. And now for the ch chain itself, I wanted to have three points which I can use uh, to adjust its uh, shape. So what I'll do is I'm just going to place three point elements like this, hit the escape key a couple of times, then select them all, make them adaptive and run a spline through them and make it a reference line. Perfect. And now as you can see, when you move these, it's just going to move the whole thing. Uh, then you want to select that spline and you want to divide its path. And as you can see, it's going to divide like this. Now for the layout, I'm just going to set it to a fixed distance, uh, just like that. So I can basically control uh, the length in between these points. And as with everything else, let's control the distance through a parameter. So I'm just going to click here on associate family parameter, create a new one, make it an instance parameter, and let's call it segment length. Click OK, OK again. And then in the family types, I'm just going to here assign this to 200 millimeters. I think this will be fine. OK. And then you can make it smaller or larger, however you like. Yeah, let's just leave it like this. Okay, so now it's time to actually turn this into a chain. So for that, we need to load in this family. So I'm just going to go here to load into project, it's going to load it in and it's going to look 
weird like this. So you just want to make sure that place on face is selected. Then you want to click on that point one for your first click and here for your second click, just like that. And then for the next one, go here with the first click and here with the second click. And then you just repeat that across the whole chain. Just kidding. <laughs> of course not. So this is Revit. We're doing everything uh, in a smart way. So let's just select the second one here. Actually, I'm going to turn on 10 lines to see it a bit better. So you select the second one and then here we have the rotation angle. So let's bring that back to zero just like this. So now we have two of these. OK, hold the control key and then we have this option repeat. So once we have selected both of them and we repeat them, it's just going to repeat that shape along the length of this spline and that forms our chain. So now if I start moving this around, I can move this one like that, move it around, I can actually move it up, I can move this one down if I want. So I can actually create a chain that follows whichever shape I like. And then uh, in one of the future videos, I'll show you how to actually implement this inside of a project. If you just want to get the complete family without having to go through the hassle of making it yourself, or if you want to get access to all of my Revit project files, while well, all of that is available on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up in the cards above, and then also down in a description of this video. Thank you for watching guys. Make sure to check out my website BalkanArctic.com for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.